Hello, in this video we'll be looking at the Protomax water jet cutter. The water jet cutter uses a high pressure jet of water mixed with garnet sand to pierce and cut a range of sheet materials including metals, plastics, composites and ceramics. However, it will also cut foams, woods and many more. The nozzle follows a vector path created from a DXF and can cut very accurately with intricate detail. Here in the iForge, we have a Protomax water jet cutter with a bed size of 300 by 300 millimeters and a maximum thickness of 25 millimeters. The iForge has some stock materials available for purchase. Please ask at the till or check our price list to see what is available. Water jet cutters are extremely powerful machines and will cut through most materials. If used incorrectly, they can have a serious impact. It is therefore important to read and adhere to the risk assessment. Any contact with the water jet would result in a very serious injury, therefore never override any of the interlocks. The machine will only cut with the guard down. Debris, materials and the bed will have sharp edges and burrs as a result of the cutting process, so take care when loading and unloading material. Stagnant water in the machine could carry disease carrying bacteria. It is therefore essential that whilst the machine lid is open, the user must wear gloves and goggles. While the machine is running, you should always watch the machine and keep the lid closed. To use the water jet cutter, DXF files must first be converted to OMX files, which can be done using the OMX layout program. Open OMX layout and use the import CAD to import the desired DXF file. Select all lines by right-clicking the Select tool and all. Use the Clean tool to remove any unnecessary lines or points. Select Quality. Higher quality is slower, but results in a smoother finish. 3 is generally good enough. With all the lines selected, use the AutoPath tool to route the most efficient route. This is usually best for most designs. Now select post and select the starting point of the path. Check that the red areas are on the correct side of the cut. For example, the inside of circles if a hole is desired. This will save the toolpath in OMX format in the same location as the original DXF. Move this file to the desktop before proceeding. To use the machine, first switch on the water and power supply. The machine is switched on when the light is illuminated. Now check that the water supply is on and that the pressure reads between 45 to 80 psi on the pump dial. Once the machine is turned on, open the OMX Make application on the laptop. Make sure to wear gloves and goggles when the lid is open. Open the lid and move the nozzle up. Disconnect the garnet feed, making sure that it doesn't drop into the water. Now the axes of the machine can be honed by clicking the red home button. Now the machine must be flushed. Move the nozzle to the center of the bed in between two slats using the jog buttons. Lower nozzle to about 10 millimeters above water level and lower the splash guard. Close the lid and select test. This runs for one minute and flushes the nozzle with water. After this test finishes, open the lid and reconnect the garnet feed. Then perform the test again, watching the garnet feed carefully for the movement of abrasive. This test can be ended once material can be seen moving through the tube. The machine is now ready to cut. Open the desired OMX file as prepared from OMX layout. Select the material to be used. The thickness and offset can also be set here. 0.3mm offset is a good starting point, but may need to be adjusted based on the inspection from a test cut. Open the lid of the machine. Now secure the material onto the bed using the material holding clamps, making sure that they will not interfere with the nozzle during operation. Adjust the nozzle height using the standoff tool. The nozzle may need to be moved if the stock material is too small. Use one hand to loosen or tighten the screw and one hand to support the nozzle. Try to avoid dropping the nozzle down onto the material. To check whether the design will fit onto the material, a dry run is used. 
Left click begin machining, then right click start and select dry run. Half or quarter speed should be used if the operation is complex or small. The machine now will follow the path of the nozzle without starting the water jet. Watch out for any collisions, check sizes and check that the part fits on the material. Move the nozzle to the start location and set path start to zero. Fill the tank to 5mm above the bottom of the nozzle using the provided hose. This improves cut quality and decreases noise levels. Make sure the drain is moved to the upwards position to stop the water from draining. Move the nozzle to the start location and set path start to zero. Once you are happy with the setup, you can start machining. Replace the nozzle splash guard and close the lid of the machine. Left click begin machining, then right click start. Check that the water pressure remains greater than 25 psi and that the garnet sand hopper remains topped up. After cutting, lift up the nozzle and use the jog controls to move the nozzle out of the way. Lower the pump overflow to lower the water level to 10 mm beneath the top of the slats. It is good to also check the overflow pump behind the machine to make sure that it is not excessively full. Remove the material and the part. Take care with this as the material and slats may be sharp after cutting. After cutting, the nozzle must be flushed again in preparation for the next user. Remove the garnet sand feed tube and invert the nozzle splash guard. Use the jog keys in the OMX Make software to move the nozzle to the middle of the tank and midway between two slats. Check that the nozzle is less than 25mm above the water. Close the lid. In the OMX software, click test, test cutting head and start test. This will again be run for 60 seconds. After this, it is good practice to empty the trays of sand and to wash down the machine using the spray hose. When the machine is not being used, it should be shut down using both power switches. The water supply should also be switched off.